Okay, gang. We're going to read two different sections from Robert Anton Wilson's Wilhelm Reich in Hell. Okay. And uh, I forgot to read when those books were put out, uh, the previous books, but this was uh, put out in 1995. No, the. 1995 I guess or this is the 1990 no 19 this is the 1995 edition it's the third printing and it was put out in uh, first printing was 1987 okay I need to get a first printing of this thing and we're gonna read page 33 there's like three pages we're gonna read here okay and then we're gonna go to page uh, 72 which is part of the musical Okay, this is a musical about the persecution of Wilhelm Reich, the murder of Christ, as uh, Wilhelm Reich, Robert Anton Wilson have stated. Page 33. Let me get comfortable here. Let me get comfortable here. And, gang, before we read, let's give it a little message. Do not forget, do not forget, because this is very much related to the persecution of Julian Assange. So free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Julian Assange, publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. Something that we desperately need in our societies. Salute to Julian Assange gang. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, where countless resources available on free speech platforms. Salute Adam on Sensor Tube. Page 33 of Robert Anton Wilson's Wilhelm, Wilhelm Reich in Hell. Beyond true and false, Nietzsche scandalized and terrified the Orthodox a hundred years ago by saying the next step in philosophy would take us beyond good and evil. I increasingly suspect that the next step in science, the new paradigm, will take us beyond true and false. I wonder how much scandal and terror that idea will create. I have already spoken of Reich's hypothetical organ as not necessar necessarily a concrete thing, but a kind of heightened perception. Another word for, quote, kind of perception, end quote, is of course, gloss. The term for uh, sociology and anthropomethodology, which I have already used many times, a gloss, a model, a reality tunnel, a way of sensing and organizing the world is, it seems to me, always a human product and always relative to the humans who created it and their concrete situation in space-time. If we turn to the psychology of knowledge and try to use it impartially and not as a weapon to invalidate opponents, it is possible to consider some glosses as metaglosses or glosses of glosses. Marxism, for instance, is a metagloss which glosses other glosses in terms of the economic factors acting upon the persons or group who create them. The Freudian and even more, the Reichian system are also metaglosses in this sense. They attempt, to, they attempt to explain why certain glosses are popular with certain people. A good deal of radical feminism is a very proactive metagloss, telling us how the glosses of the last 6,000 years of male-dominated history look from a non-male perspective. That's the kitty cat. If we apply metaglosses, not just to glosses, but to other metaglosses, we will, of course, create strange loops. But I think these, these will be fruitful, like the strange loops of Zen logic and box music, rather than pathological, like the strange loops of schizophrenia. In building metaglosses of metaglosses, we will find ourselves, I think, wandering out of the search for the for the one correct reality tunnel into an on ontological 
anthropological study on com of comparative reality labyrinths. Concretely, the Marxist anal analysis of Freudian psychology as a middle class gloss can be illuminating rather than merely palmerical or destructive. If we recognize the Freudian middle class gloss need not be entirely false just because it is middle class. The Freudian analysis of Marxism as an expanded odupious complex can also be enlightening and not merely invalidating if we remember that an odupious complex subliminated into very intelligent sociological analysis can y yield valid insights and it is not the same thing as a Udinian complex merely acted as criminal rebellion against the cop as father figure. That is, if we use each gloss to understand rather than to designate other systems of glossing, then each gloss may well have its own lessons to teach us, and we can learn a bit from all of them. Certainly, the feminist analysis of both Fru Freud and Marx has been a most educational new uh, perspective for our society to acquire. My own philosophical position as regular readers of my damned uh, heresies know by now is a kind of multi-gloss <laughs> agnetism or a metagloss that tries to learn from all other glosses but does not accept any one gloss or metagloss add the one true map of universe. When I am in my existentialist or phene phenomenologist reality tunnel, all glosses seem equally interesting as data is uh, prime primate psychology but none are as important as real as what is immediately before my senses as the moment what choices i have to make right here and right now when i am in my rickian or non neo rickian reality tunnel it seems overwhelmingly obvious to me that i live among a species that is desperately sick and desperately afraid of the changes and must undergo to be cured. When I am in a Buddhist reality tunnel, the medical metaphor of sickness in Reich system seems as oversimplified as the Christian metaphor of sin, and I merely see that the human race at this stage of its evolution has the habits inevitable at this stage of evolution. That is, that it that is is and our evolution of it are simply our evolution of it it is most interesting and amusing to step out out of all the glosses mentioned so far and look things with a ethological ecological or darwinian sociobiological gloss glosses like christian original sin buddhist maya marxist Marxist class war, Rickian emotional plague, etc., all seem, from this biosocial perspective, crude primate grunts attempting to articulate the crisscrossing and often tangled genetic vectors in time that make up our evolutionary history to date. Domesticate, domesticated primates like wild primates or fish or ants are simply organisms trying to make a suitable habitat of the space-time grid in which they find themselves and they often make mistakes just like any other species. When I am in my Nietzschean gloss, I can contemplate all other glosses as works of art and ask which gloss, if any, I wish to put my will into and try to impose on the future. Should I invent my own gloss or pick somebody else's or just contemplate all glosses impartially? Nietzsche varied between prompting his own gloss, evolution towards higher intelligence, and sardonic 
contemplation of the relatively rel relativity of all possible glosses. I can also enter other glosses of rea or reality tunnels and learn new perspectives continually. Most readers from this from this re most readers think this refers hypothetically to some abstract or ideal I who should be able to do th these things but I am speaking literally and autobiographically after 20 odd years of practice of the exercises described in my cosmic trigger and Prometheus rising I have learned to quantum jump from one reality tunnel to any other reality tunnel every novelist and every good psycho psychotherapist learns a bit of this art of self-transformation because it is the only way to understand why other people do the weird things they do i suggest that such leaps of un ontological empathy may have value for science and philosophy generally and are not just of interest to novelists and other psycho psych, psychologists in physics at present there are two meta glosses general relativity and quantum mechanics which diverge from each other in many ways in one sense there they are all they are as different as the novels of jane austen and samuel beckett in another metaphor they are as different as the grammar of english and that of japanese although these systems present us with what seem to be two quite distinct universes physicists are not inclined to throw one out and embrace the other monogram mono monogamously or monotheistically the general attitude among working physicists is that general relativity is one is one useful model and quantum mechanics is another useful model and as long as they remain useful we might as well use them in quantum mechanics people uh, quantum mechanics itself there are two models of the world inside the atom the wave model and the particle model these do not differ merely in style like english and japanese they contradict each other totally like the statements robin is a boy and robin is a girl <laughs> nonetheless both models are useful and physicists use both at different times without worrying about aristotle's rule that the two contradictory statements cannot function in the same system in art despite the dogmas of a few authorities we have learned that different glosses can be equally valuable even if they are as opposed to each other as the styles of rembrandt and picasso or of van gogh and pollack or of turner and hogarth or even of Raphael and Hopper. In music, although Beethoven maniacs and Mozart cultists rear up and afflict us occasionally, we have, in general, learned to appreciate the various glosses of Vivaldi and Bach and Amadeus and Ludwig and Wagner and Elgar and Moller, etc., as not being mutually exclusive but as each adding to the richness of our tradition is it possible that we can learn to think of models or world glosses not as true or false in some abstract and absolute absolute sense absolute sense but as the products of humans in concrete situations in space time and all possessing some kind of relative truth for the persons who create them at least and none of them big enough and inclusive enough to contain all the truth brilliant right love robert anton wilson right brilliant i just get joy from reading him right 
Spencer skirts on sensor tube live on sensor tube. I got pushed into it by Elder God. <laughs> Elder God comes and Beethoven is great for protest music. Gang, I'm gonna read. We're going into the musical. Okay, so we're in. Is it, I think this is Act One still. Okay. Oh wait a second. Oh, cast of characters. Yeah, we're in Act One. Okay. Act one begins at page uh, 48, right? 49. And we're going to read page 72. But I need to find a place, a good starting point. I need to find a good starting point. This just continues. <laughs> and by the way, uh, just so you know, uh, the United States government persecuted Wilhelm Reich, uh, stating that he was uh, trying to uh, provide medical advice and he was pretending to be a doctor or medical uh, heal cancer and heal sickness without a license and without uh, you, you have to look into it I looked into this a long time ago right so basically it was a medical association that was going after Wilhelm Reich through the federal government and they finally zapped him because of uh, mail between states and whatnot Oh my god look at this i gotta show you this okay so in the musical so here i'll show you it, this is a discussion between so in the musical there's different characters playing right so one of the characters playing is the american medical association and i'm going to show you this and the person reading this and saying this is supposed to say it in a let's see if this will focus Disney childish tone right tune right which is basically the way you should take in well I won't say anything uh, just so you know right and then there's chorus mosach mos massage massage right so we're gonna start reading from there page 69 this is a symphony that has already happened. The musical has already begun. We're in a courthouse. The federal government is persecuting Wilhelm Reich, right? Persecuting Wilhelm Reich. The musical notes, <laughs> the musical notes. No, I don't think there's musical. You can go on CensorTube and other free speech platforms and find a musical to this. Okay, I'm going to read actually starting page at the bottom of page 68. Said. We're going to read Said in a uh, recitative, recitative, recitative rapidly. How am I going to do this rapidly? His claim that all citizen uh, civilized people suffer to some degree from this alleged emotional plague which tenses the muscles stiffens the breathing and produces such physical symptoms as asthma allergies cancer and a couple of dozen more 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 that he just tacked on together with such mental uh, symptoms as nightmares dizziness insomnia new neurosis and a couple of dozen more that he just tacked on and finally even produces such social social pathological pa pathologies as rape violence continuous war indifferences to suffering in others pauses so pauses finally for breath and a couple of dozen more than he just tacked on 
Medical Associ uh, American Medical, Medical Association in a Disney childish tune. We hate to say it, but he's only but a nut. See him swell and strut. What a silly mutt. We hate to say it, but he's nothing but a nut. Mass Massach rises. Massach and Sage chorus. See him swell and strut. What a silly mutt. American Medical Association. We hate to say it, but he's nothing but a nut. Massach sits. Said. Recessitive. His claim that the emotional plague and muscles tensions began with organized religion was exasperated by early capitalism and imperialism with the radical myths that invented uh, invented to justify looting other people peoples and has now reached its most virulent form in the modern totalitarianism both so-called capitalism and so-called socialism american medical association replies recessive such are such all embracing condemnations and devil theories all characteristic of the paranoid schizophrenic who always thinks everybody is mad except himself he always thinks everybody is mad except himself said your general conclusion then you considered opinions as licensed experts on the theories and teachings of poor confused and embittered dr wilhelm reich american medical association disney tune again we think his books are bum books silly willies dumb books they're hardly books at all they're anarchist and mad books. We think his books are bad books. They're hardly books at all. Said, thank you very much. Your, your learned and expert opinions have definitely been of great importance in this sad case. Ringmaster half dozing. What? Yes, most certainly. The court appreciates the experts opinions on these uh, learned men and uh, the learned lady and we thank you all for uh, taking time to come here Reich replies may I cross-examine ringmaster oh certainly absolutely we intend to maintain the highest standards of civilized law here reich i've noticed that already Sate unlocks reich's chains from chair reich rises chains dangling from his wrists and clanking reich what is the cause of cancer american medical association at present unknown reich what is the cause of schizophrenia american medical association at present unknown reich unknown two of the major plagues of our time and you haven't the clue american medical association in a disney tune we need more funds for research We need a he and she research. We need your quits and pens for work on pure science. Give us another year or two. We'll have results to astonish you. Reich. That's what you were saying when you killed me the first time in 1957. Say, objection. Defendant is making speeches, not asking questions. Ringmaster sustained. Reich. It has been said that nobody wants war, but wars keep on happening. Why do you suppose that is? Say, objection. This is a sociological question and not, and our experts are medical doctors. 
Reich. They are learned persons. Their opinions will be of value. Ringmaster. In this case, I would like an answer. For the record, objection overruled. Reich. Well, why do wars keep happening? First male singer. The politicians are to blame. Second male singer. It's the international banking game. Third male singer. The generals in their quest for fame. Female singer. No, no, no. It's one of nature's nasty tricks. Biological politics. The genetic drive for territory. That's the universal's universal story. Hired liars call it glory. Pacifists complain it's gory. But it's only natural history. Every little primate gene is a DNA machine programmed to seek territory, programmed to seek territory. Ringmaster Singh, the politicians, first male singer, the politicians, second male singer, the bankers, third male singer, the generals, female singer, the goddamn genes. Reich. In other words, cause unknown. Cancer, cause unknown. Schizophrenia, cause unknown. War, cause unknown. But is not all this the sign of a diseased species? Does it not suggest the existence of a general emotional plague afflicting the whole human race? Said, objection. Defendant is making speeches again. The existence of this so-called emotional plague has never been demonstrated. Reich. It is obviously, grossly, palpably, right before your eyes, every moment in every human gathering, in parliaments, in corporations, in families, right here in the circus you call a courtroom. We literally are not responsible for what we are doing. We literally do not see what we are doing. Ringmaster. Defendant has done it again. I am going to have to cite you for contempt if you do not control yourself, Dr. Reich. Reich. I am merely trying to explain. Dash. There's another ear-splitting whistle at high decibels level from the computer in the lobby. The actors all jump. Hopefully, the audience does too. Massage shaken. Jesus motherfucking Christ! Reich. Just another Hiroshima being prepared. Cause unknown. First male singer. The politicians. Second male singer. The bankers. Third male singer, the generals, female singer, our goddamn jeans. Ringmaster, still recovering from the shock. I thought I ordered that, that contraption removed from this court. And then it goes into first acrobat enters. Let's call it there. You get the gist brilliant book Robert Anton Wilson's Wilhelm Reich in Hell apologies for tapping it might have been too loud okay brilliant book